It's July 3rd, 1931. Heavyweight champion of the world, Max Schmeling, takes on the number one ranking contender in the heavyweight division, Young Stribling. That's heavyweight champion Max Schmeling entering the ring to make the first title defense of his newly won heavyweight championship. Challenger Young Stribling shakes hands with Max and then walks back to his corner. Schmeling is asked by the photographers to walk across the ring and pose with Stribling for the still cameras. Max obligingly does just what the newsmen request. Schmeling shakes hands with light heavyweight champion Tommy Loughran as the photographers snap away. In round one, Schmeling, with back to camera, starts off carrying the fight to his challenger. Schmeling, now to your left, won the heavyweight title one year ago. As a result of a low blow landed by Jack Sharkey, as Max sat on his stool in agonizing pain, he was declared champion, which was the first time that the heavyweight title had ever been won as a result of a low blow. Even though Max is the heavyweight champion of the world, Stribling, now to your left, has had a great deal more professional experience than the champion. Stribling turned professional when he was only 17 years old back in 1921. His real name is William Lawrence Stribling but he was very quickly nicknamed Young and has been fighting under that nickname ever since. Watch the men exchange strong left jabs. Schmeling is looking to shoot in his straight right, the punch which he used to score practically all of his 30 KOs. Schmeling is taken round one by being the aggressor and landing the more effective punches. Round two was scored evenly by the judges, but Stribling even things up in round three by scoring well to the body and winning the round clearly. We're in round four of this scheduled 15-round heavyweight championship fight. And both Schmeling and Stribling are looking to send in those big right hands.
You can get an idea how seriously Stripling takes his boxing profession in these practically unbelievable statistics. In his 10 years campaigning successfully in every division from the bantamweight up through the heavyweight class, he has had the fantastic total of 274 fights with an incredible 116 knockouts. No fighter in any division in the history of boxing ever compiled that many knockouts. You'll see Max step in two lefts and follow with the right. Stribling ties up the champion. He doesn't want to give Max any punching room. You can place Stribling's 224 fights in proper perspective when you realize that the champion, Max Schmelin, who has been fighting eight years in the heavyweight division, has had only 52 professional fights. Stribling has had almost six times that many contests, yet there is only eight months difference in their respective ages. Here at the end of round four, Schmelling again is given the edge by all three officials. Max pressed the fight and landed the harder punches. Stribling, sitting in his corner, is told he has to be more aggressive and has to use his right hand. In round six through eight, the men fought on even turns, with Schmelling forcing the action throughout, while Stribling landed very effective counter punches, both to the head and body. Here in round nine, it's still anybody's fight. Schmelling has a slight edge, which seems to justify his being the three to two favorite. Stribling shoots in a punishing right to the body and a left to the jaw. Those were the best punches of the fight thus far by Stribling.
While Max is aware of Stripling's sensational knockout record, he too has flattened the finest heavyweights in the division with that devastating straight right hand. Everyone who has been in the ring with Schmeling knows that behind that medium speed left can come a pulverizing right to the jaw that has ended many a fight merely 10 seconds after it landed. Dribbling is laying all over Schmeller. Notice how he will continuously tie Max up by getting in close, not giving Schmeling punching room. Schmeling won the heavyweight championship as a result of that low blow landed by Jack Sharkey, the New York Commission was hotly in favor of an immediate return match, but Schmeling turned thumbs down on it. In the meantime, Stribling compiled such a huge knockout record that the New York Commission relented and told Max that they would recognize Stribling as a logical contender. Watch Stribling land a short left and jolting right to the head. Stribling is still in there looking for that knockout here in round 11. You'll see Max pour it on now, landing good, solid punches. Oh, 
Melling is pursuing Stribling all over the ring. He knows Stribling is much weaker now, and he's going to keep that pressure on. One of Schmeling's attributes is Max's ability to take a punch. He is known in the business as having an iron jaw as a result of being totally unaffected or even slowed down after being hit by some of the hardest punchers in the heavyweight division. It's all smelling here in round 13. And as the round ends, it appears that Stribling can only win by a knockout. This is the 15th and final round. The 14th was again all smelling as he continued to batter Stribling to both head and body. Here in round 15, Max is pouring it on. Watch closely as Schmilling lands a smashing right to the jaw and Scribbling goes down. Here's that crushing right to the jaw in slow motion. The First knockdown of the fight here in the final 15th round. As Schmeling turns to go to a neutral corner, referee George Blake steps in to pick up the count. As Tribbling lies on the floor trying to gather himself, the referee's count reaches nine as Tribbling drags himself off the canvas. But Blake decides that Tribbling has had enough and stops the fight. Schmeling is deliriously happy and actually carries Tribbling to his corner. With just 25 seconds left in this championship fight, Schmeling scores a sudden and dramatic knockout victory over young Stribling. Max Schmeling successfully defends his world's heavyweight championship on July 3rd, 
nineteen thirty one.